Hey guys, how's it going? Tom here from Ojon Models. So today we're going to be starting work on a pair of Sioux RS1s for a couple customers. Now these are older Atlas, which means they share a lot of tooling with the original Kato models. And those did not have much detail to start out with. Now Atlas has added a couple things over the years, like a little fan cover and things like that, but nothing really significant and no separate grab irons. So we're going to have to take care of that along with some other things. So in the box for these undecorated models, you get this little window glazing that you put in inside the cab, and then you also get some horn hook couplers, which I know exactly what we should do with. So one thing I like to do before I even start working on a model is look at as many reference photos as possible. Now thankfully for this project, the customers supplied some pretty nice pictures that were difficult to find on other websites I normally use. Uh, as you can see, this is a Sioux line gold and maroon scheme. The majority of the hood is maroon and there's some gold striping on the sides and the ends as well. Uh, Detail-wise, we're not going crazy on these models, but there are dual-pile headlights on either end of the locomotive. There is also an all-weather cab on the engineer side, and there is a rebuild frog on the bottom of the frame there, as you can see. And on the end, there's this crazy wing design that we're going to have to replicate with a decal from Microscale. Alright, so back to the actual models. In this video series, we're going to be focusing on one locomotive just so we have a direct before and after comparison between painting and detailing. It'll be pretty cool to see a before and after right next to each other. And now it's on to taking this thing apart. So I have a little compilation, montage, quick video here of tearing one of these things apart. Obviously starting with the simple, delicate things like handrails on the outside of the locomotive, anything that could be damaged easily is taken off first. And I think the shell yep, just pops right off these things, there's no fasteners or anything to hold them on. The cab comes right off as well, no fasteners or screws or anything. Going on to the chassis, there are some screws to take off the coupler boxes and the motor as well. There's a board on this as well and you can just pull off those little plastic clips and the wires fall right off of that thing. And once you get the wires off, there's just two little plastic tabs that hold on the board. And the motor comes off with two screws on the bottom. And then the trucks come off with the little plastic clip above the worm drive housing right there, as you can see. And that's pretty much it. As I mentioned before, these things are very simple and easy to take apart, no adhesives or anything. And as you can see, these are all the parts off this thing, so very straightforward, and now we can continue on. So this is kind of old fashioned, but I like having physical copies of the pictures I'm referencing, so I like to print out a few pictures on a sheet of paper, as you can see here. And now it's off to my favorite place in the whole world, P&D Hobby Shop in Fraser, Michigan. They have pretty much every detail part you can imagine for HO scale and even O scale as well. And it's really cool picking up stuff here. Not many places like this exist anymore. And as you can see, I picked up quite a few parts. So here's the parts that we got. From CalScale, we got some end grabs, both curved, drop, and straight, along with some lift rings. Detail Associates, we have the dual pile headlights. Details West, we have the Rebrail Frogs and the Wabco Type E Horns times 2 And we also have some all-weather cab windows. So we're going to start by working on the shell of this locomotive. And the first thing we're going to do is shave down all these end grabs. These are molded in plastic and they look terrible and also for the decals we'll be applying, they will not work out very well. So just using a brand new uh, number 11 X-Acto blade, start shaving these things away. Be careful, one, to not cut yourself obviously, and also not to cut any of the other detail. Like there's a little cap thing on the end you can see there. And once you're done shaving it off with an X-Acto, get some sandpaper and start shaving things down. And you can use different grits if you want as well. Go ahead and repeat the same process on the top lift ring so things look terrible. Cut them right off, use some sandpaper to knock them down. And as you can see, once everything is said and done, the end is nice and flat along with the top, as well as the rear of the locomotive. So let's start putting some actual detail parts on this locomotive. 
The first thing we're going to do is add the dual pile headlights on either side. As you can see, they're very simple parts, just a little circle with two small circles inside of them where the actual lenses go. And all we're going to do for this is pop them right on the end, get some super glue on at the end of the original light casing, put that thing on there, and as you can see, plain and simple, it turns out really well. Moving on to the horns here, we'll be using these dual Wabco Type E horns. Pretty close to the ones on a prototype, not exact, but close enough for our needs. Now one tool I definitely recommend for a modeler if you do not have this already is a pin vise. For these tiny little drill bits, there's no way you can use an electric drill by hand, and these make things way easier for doing small parts like this. So our prototype has two horns on it, one on either hood end right next to the cab windows. So just go ahead using, in this case, a number 60 drill bit and drill right through the plastic. This plastic is very soft on these Atlas engines, so you'll have no issue going through there at all. And then go ahead, get some glue on the end of your horn, make sure you shaved off all of the excess material from the horn to make it look nice. And using some tweezers, pop her in there. Make sure it's all aligned and nice. Thankfully, super glue gives you a couple seconds to situate things as you need. All right, now we got both those horns on there. As you can see, they're very straight and they look pretty good. And if we put the cab on there, we have a perfect amount of clearance as well. I did not measure anything. This is all eyeballing it, but honestly, for this kind of thing, you don't really need to measure everything perfectly. So now it is on to the lift rings. These are from CalScale. They're an Alco style, kind of like a U shape. We're going to be using a number 79 drill bit for these. Be very careful because those are extremely delicate drill bits. And we'll just be putting these in the original spots where the lift rings were before we shaved them off. I think there's a total of eight on the top of this locomotive. As you can see, this is what they look like. Be careful. If you breathe on them the wrong way, they will fall off. They're tiny, very lightweight things. So just go ahead and approximately where one was before, drill your number 79 bits and make a hole in there and then put a second hole right next to it. Now I just eyeball it again, I measure up the part next to it, it's pretty difficult to mess it up. So add a little bit of super glue to the end of the part there and pop her in the hole and position it how you'd like. I like using a little flathead screwdriver and the tweezers just to position it the way that I want it. And as you can see, here's all eight of them on top of the engine, on the rear and the front as well. Moving on to the grab irons on the end of the locomotive here. I did not film doing all of this because honestly it's pretty boring, but again, same method as the lift rings, just measure up the part, drill a couple holes with that number 79 drill bit and position things how you'd like. Now, these things are very finicky and they do take some maneuvering to get around. You can bend them however you want. The end product's gonna look pretty good either way. So there's the one on the end and the curved ones and the drop grabs as well. As you can see, after a little bit of positioning and bending around, they look pretty cool. All right, so here's another pretty easy part to install. This is a all weather cab window. This mounts right on the outside of the cab. And as you can see here, they include the glass with the window, which is pretty cool. So we're gonna start out by cutting out that middle pane thing from this window. Just use some side cutters and cut that thing right off there. And then you can go back with an X-Acto blade, shave off some of the extra. And once you get it off the top and the bottom there, just go back with some sandpaper or some kind of sanding stick and shave it down to have a nice clean surface for this thing to mount right on top of. Now we can actually glue this thing on here and I do realize this whole thing is out of focus so sorry about that. One thing I like to do with these small parts is put glue on the end of a toothpick instead of actually putting it on the part itself and then spread it with a toothpick. It makes things way easier and you can control the glue flow a lot better so there's not a bunch of excess laying around. But anyways, using tweezers, I stuck it on there and again, just eyeballed it. And thankfully it fit perfectly around the outside of the rectangle that used to be the standard window on the side of the cab here. And I just kind of squeezed it on there, let it dry for a couple minutes and it turned out pretty cool. So that's it for the shelf for now. I think things turned out pretty well on here, but now we're going to move on to the frame. And this is a big piece of cast metal, so it's gonna be kind of interesting working with this. 
Looking at our reference pictures here, you can see these two bright yellow re-railing frogs. Now they just mounted these on the side frame rails using a couple of standoffs, and we're going to mimic that with a couple of detail parts and some pieces of metal. And here's our detail parts made by Details West, real easy, we're not going to be using these brackets, we're going to be making our own brackets. So I'm using a number 76 drill bit in the pin vise here, and this is going to be kind of crazy looking, but I've done it before and it seems to work. I'm going to put the pin vise in my drill press here, and put it on a real low speed, and we're going to start drilling holes for those standoffs that I mentioned. And just go real slow with the feed speed here. Be careful not to break that bit because these things will break very easily. So just use barely any pressure. And we're going to make two holes right next to each other. About the same width as the bracket in the prototype pictures. I'm going to use some 15 thou bronze wire. As you can see, it's made by Titchy. They make a lot of different sizes, but 15 thou is about the right size for this application. And I'm just going to test fit it here using a pair of needle noses. As you can see, it fits right in. And if you take off the tweezers, it'll fit right in the hole. The hole's only about maybe one millimeter deep. And on the end here, to make the actual bracket where it mounts to the rebrail frog, just use those tweezers and bend a 90 degree angle right at the end here. And you'll be able to see it once I take the tweezers off here. It's a pretty sharp 90 degree angle. So before you cut anything, just test fit that little 90 degree bend in the re-reel frog and as you can see after I drilled out those holes, they fit pretty nice right in there. And now you're going to make two of those brackets, cut them to the proper length for your application, put some glue on the end, and as you can see right here, they just popped right in the two holes that we drilled before. And there should be some kind of mechanical lock in there, it should rely just on the glue. And as you can see, it's finished right there. And then on the opposite side, it looks pretty much the same. It's just mirrored on that side. That pretty much wraps things up for detailing these locomotives. For about 25 bucks with the detail parts and a few hours of work, I think they came out pretty good looking. Now in the next video, we're gonna start painting and then they're gonna start looking really good. I appreciate you guys watching this video. Let me know if you like the series down below. Like I said, next video is gonna be painting and then after that, we're gonna install GCC and sound. So thank you guys for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.